So in addition to exercise, these are the epigenetic factors. You, you heard a lot about genes and DNA. Epigenetic factors are those factors above the genes that tell your genes which proteins to make, as Dr. Roizen said. So if you eat a Big Mac infused with, with uh, uh, antibiotics and uh, hormones in a feedlot and uh, order a trans fatty acids on your French fries and a bottle of phosphoric acid called Coke, uh, it's going to tell your your genome to make inflammatory agents. What's the common cause of cancer, Alzheimer's, stroke, diabetes? It's inflammation. Whatever you can do to reduce inflammation, you're going to help with your longevity and your health span. The same with exercise and, and being careful of the water and how you drink and the organic versus non-organic. And stress is, is neurotoxic to the brain. In contrast, to a Mediterranean type diet, polyphenols, appropriate supplements, exercise, clean air, water, and, and a strong family unit is a very important thing. If you read Dan Bruckner's book, Blue Zones, the common factor of all the centenarians that he studied is that these epigenetic factors are operant. Their diet is kind of a Mediterranean diet. They work hard. They have a clean air, clean environment, and they have strong family units for when the bottom drops out, and it always does at some point, and, and also they get enough sleep. So um, trying to do my exercise and do the things that I know epigenetically what I'm supposed to do. I also, about three or four years ago, met Dr. Afradi, uh, David Globig, and Amir uh, here at the Aviv Hyperbaric Center. And I decided to get involved and learn about uh, hyperbaric oxygen therapy. And subsequently, uh, how I, I've done a lot of work with traumatic brain injuries, particularly concussions, CTE, post-concussion syndrome, and uh, in, particularly in sports, but also stroke, cognitive impairment, memory impairment, long COVID, and how to enhance performance. How, and, and, and I'm going to share some of the thoughts on that with you. And these are the generally accepted and paid for conditions for hyperbaric oxygen use. Wounds that won't heal in particular are those burns, traumatic infections, gas emboli, uh, even acute hearing loss is something that you should keep in mind. And uh, these, these are generally accepted, payable, reimbursable things. Brains of the wound, the government won't cover. Insurance companies won't cover. Brains of the, or wounds of the brain, the government won't cover. But they will of your diabetic ulcer ready to get an amputation. So I looked into the literature a bit. And one of the things you've heard about, and many of you know, is telomeres. You heard about immunosenescence, senescent cells from uh, Dr. Hadani and others. And they've shown in very good studies how hyperbaric oxygen increases telomere length, which is as we age, our telomeres shorten until they finally shorten to the point where the cells are no longer functional and they become senescent. And senescent cells spew out all sorts of cytokines and, 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 and cytotoxins that uh, are deleterious to the body and brain. So they've shown that telomeres actually can be increased and elongated with hyperbaric oxygen therapy. And these are my telomeres uh, that... I, I, I went under under 60 treatments, underwent 60 treatments of hyperbaric oxygen, and I'll show you uh, what I did before and after, but my telomeres were elongated by 100%. Now, you have to remember my age, 100%, the delta for me is not going to be the same as somebody 22 years of age. But regardless, uh, it, it clearly is a biomarker that one can look at in terms of effectiveness. For training and performance, uh, Amir Hadani and Dr. Afradi and others 
did another study. They took middle-aged athletes and they gave them hyperbaric oxygen therapy. But beforehand, they did a whole lot of biomarker studies. They did a biopsy. They put a large needle into the buttock, the gluteus, the gluteus maximus of these athletes, biopsied the muscle, and then looked at the muscles for mitochondria. Mitochondria are the organelles in every cell of our body that makes energy, oxygen and glucose to make ATP. And what they found was there was mitochondrial biogenesis. Mitochondria actually became more proliferative and more active, meaning more energy, more effectiveness in terms of the uh, operations of, of every cell. And they also saw that not only they, they did uh, evaluations looking at cognition, their energy level and general satisfaction. And you can see the improvement before and after uh, the use of hyperbaric oxygen in this healthy middle-aged group. And the, uh, their cardiopulmonary function also significantly improved. So, you know, is this something that elite athletes, if you get a 1% or 2% increase in your ability at a high or low level, it, it can be very significant. So with this kind of information, I decided to be a, an experiment of one. And I, uh, I, I went to the Aviv Center for three months, and uh, every day, five days a week, two hours a day, I underwent dives, as they're called, or treatments. But beforehand, I measured my brain speed, my processing power, my memory. Uh, I had brain scans, my MRI, spec scans that Dr. Hadani spoke about. And I also had various blood evaluations uh, in, in terms of my cardiorespiratory fitness and also did balance and flexibility tests. So I did all this before. And then post, uh, there was clearly an improvement in recall, improvement in my executive function, planning, organizing, mild improvement in attention, and mild improvement in processing speed. And all, all very nice, clearly, it wasn't worse. Uh, but again, objectively, the scans that I had afterwards, this is an MRI showing before and after in terms of blood flow to various parts of my brain. And significantly, the blood flow to those parts of my brain correlated with those parts of brain function in terms of attention, salience, and, uh, and, and, and other functions that were, that were positive. That same thing was confirmed on spec scan in terms of blood flow. These are two different modalities that measure blood flow to different parts of the brain. So uh, the other thing that we mentioned earlier was about inflammation, the common genesis of so many of the diseases of aging. And uh, Alzheimer's, diabetes, arthritis, all of these come from Mostly, I was, I, I didn't realize, uh, what Eric said that 73% of what affects us is epigenetic or environmental and 7%, 8% is genetic. So, uh, I measured also very specific proteins in my blood, proteomics, and at 40 dives, there was a precipitous drop in the inflammatory markers that are associated with inflammation. So again, it's not that I just feel better, but there was a major biomarker change that I couldn't control indicating that the inflammatory process was less. And I actually published this in a peer-reviewed journal, Frontiers in Neurology, the difference between zero and one. Uh, and uh, the kind of my own personal experience and the results. And uh, the CPET is the cardiopulmonary exercise tests that were done. I got on a treadmill, breath with a mask, breathing, measuring my oxygen, anaerobic threshold and aerobic threshold, my VO2 max, and uh, post-treatment, 
there was improvement in lung capacity, improvement in exercise endurance, and, uh, and actually some improvement in muscle strength. And to cap it off, I, I actually did a triathlon <laughs> before and after. And uh, in looking at my cardiopulmonary tests, I reduced correction. I improved by about 9% in my aerobic and anaerobic capacity. And I was able to finish the marathon uh, or the triathlon by about 9 or 10% improvement in my time before and after. So I was, I was very pleased with that. And, and I actually came in first in my age group. But I know this age, this, this audience facts, fact checks everything. <laughs> I was the only one in my age group. <laughs> Uh, and uh, last year, I competed in the senior games uh, in Fort Lauderdale and came in second. And the guy who won, I'm sure he lied about his age. <laughs> uh, and then I, again, talking about peak performance at any age, one of my, one of my fondest and greatest experiences was... Uh, in August of 2022, I did the Chicago triathlon uh, with my daughter, uh, who's 28 years old, for the first time, uh, and she kicked my butt. But we both finished and, uh, and had a great time, and it was a very family bonding experience. 